So looking at the money market, what you want to have on your vertical axis is the interest rate. You can either represent that as a lowercase i or maybe a lowercase r for rate, something like that. I always use i just because that's what I'm used to, but either one is fine. Along the bottom, what you want to have is just quantity of money. Or I remember there was a problem um, that we were looking at. Someone had submitted on an old AP exam that said like number of dollars or something. If, if the reader gets the gist of it, it's fine. But just to be consistent, just put quantity of money. This will make more sense with the loanable funds grab, too. Okay, so that's our starting point. Now, supply of money is always going to be vertical because it is set and controlled by the Fed. So for your supply, you want as perfect a vertical line as you could get money supply. So your quantity is not going to vary as demand varies, but it will change if your supply increases or decreases. So that's going to be our original quantity. Now demand for money is going to slope down. The reason for that is because money has a price. Just like any good has a price, money has a price. The price is the interest rate that you would pay if you borrow it. So your equilibrium in the money market is going to be an interest rate and a quantity. And that's where we start. Now, what might you have to do with this? Let's say, for example, that... Hold up one second. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm out, and I'll clip this out. Uh-huh. By that demand graph, uh -huh. that would mean that there would be more demand for money when interest rates were higher. Oh, never mind. The quantity is lower. Go, go. Okay, you're getting back where you were. You're getting. I just screwed it. I just, I just got this completely. Backwards. It's because it's ma it's dip it's backwards from math. No, it's it, it, that's okay. I, I just, I, I just, I miss. I wasn't reading the graph correctly. But it makes so, sense now. Yeah, completely. Okay. And I just, I'm. I was forgetting that it's not a relationship between demand and interest rate. It's a relationship between demand and quantity. Demand and quantity. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the kind of question that you might have with this might be something along the lines of uh, when government is running a deficit, uh, what will happen in the money market? What's going to happen with a deficit is that government is going to need more money. And this, this ties into the idea of crowding out. And if you're not real familiar with that, it'll be very obvious when we do it here. So, government's running a deficit. What happens with the money market? Well, that doesn't have anything to do with money supply because we're not talking about the Fed. We're talking about government entities that need money to spend. So what we're going to do is shift demand. And remember that when we shift a demand or supply curve, generally we're right for an increase away from zero and left for a decrease or toward zero. So government deficit, increase the demand for money, it shifts to the right. So what do we see? We see higher interest rates. Government borrowing drives interest rates up. That is the idea behind crowding out. Now, not all economists agree that this happens. Not all of them agree that it's significant enough to worry about. But if you see a question dealing with crowding out, that's what it is. So, government borrowing crowds investment spending out of the market. By driving up the interest rate, businesses 
and consumers too, but primarily businesses, because investment is going to be much more interest sensitive than consumption. Government borrowing by driving up interest rates pushes or crowds investment out of this market. That's crowding out. Now that's the kind of question that you might see dealing with shifting demand for money. What you might expect for shifting supply of money is a question giving you a scenario of something the Fed is doing. So if, for example, the Fed engages in selling bonds, selling bonds means that the Fed gives you the bond and takes your money, which is going to reduce the money supply, then what we would expect to have happen is that the money supply will shift left. It's still going to be vertical. By doing that, from our original point here, just looking at our first two graphs, we're still going to drive up the rate. Now, why would you want to do that? If the economy is too hot, if the velocity of money is too fast, if we have a problem with very high inflation, then the government is going to want to enact contractionary measures to slow it down. Decreasing the money supply would be one way to do that. They could use it in conjunction with some fiscal policies too, but you don't have to worry about that on this graph, okay? So, decrease the money supply to curb high inflation, selling bonds, increasing the discount rate, or increasing the reserve requirement would be three ways to decrease the money supply. Conversely, meaning the opposite, if the Fed engages in any one of the opposites, buying bonds, lowering the discount rate, or lowering the reserve requirement, that would increase the money supply. That would shift it. It's still straight. This way. And looking at our original graphs, that would push the interest rate. Again, lower the discount rate, lower the reserve requirement, buy bonds. To decrease it, raise the discount rate, raise the reserve requirement, sell bonds. Why would you increase the money supply? The economy is sluggish. Why would you reduce it? It's too hot. Those are the basics with this market. Now we want to throw loanable funds up here with it. 